Hello. Uh, just before the film, uh, we are providing that we are with uh, Carolina Fenoll also and Alvar Martinez Vidal, and they are here in the conference. So they are they are the experts of this uh, film in different sides, uh, and they are going to say uh, two words about the film because the film is, of course, a very old film of propaganda, and they need a presentation of the research and the origin also of the films. And Carolina, as you know, uh, she's working in the National Contemporary in Madrid, as you, <laughs> you, you, you could see. Uh, but also she, she's a researcher, and she did a, a master degree about uh, Zuniga, who was the director of this film. And Alvar, of course, it's it, a uh, very, I mean, I could say, important and famous uh, medicine, historical medicine professor from the University of Valencia, but she, uh, he did uh, a lot of research on uh, medical approaches and about this Hospital Varsovia in France during uh, the, the Second World War also, after the Second World War. And just uh, I give him the floor to them uh, to say two words, very short, to the film. Because after the film we have to run away for the downstairs. There is a, a little bit of rain, Kilo bring us the rain, Halle kid, <laughs> and uh, there will be the tonight uh, gala. Okay, thank you. Hello again. Uh, so let me. St Is it okay? Yeah. I think it's working. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. So uh, let me start by saying that uh, this is, in my opinion, a very rare uh, propaganda film, which was premiered in Chicago in 1947. And uh, both the film and its director, which appears here are, as G. Zuniga, have remained almost un unknown for many decades. <laughs> Even if at the time it received the support from transnational propaganda networks, including not only international relief organizations, NGOs, but also the support of a high number of international and renowned intellectual artists like Pablo Picasso depicted in the film and many Hollywood artists as well. I would like just to mention that uh, Zuniga is also one of the pioneers in scientific film and photography in, in Spain. And very recently, it's been discovered that he kept in, in secret a photographic collection, very interesting for researchers on remembrance, including a series of wonderful pictures by Walter Reuter. It is thanks to my colleague, Alvar Martinez, that we can see this film again. Uh, and this is a film on the Spanish Republican exiles in, in France, which are depicted as the, the first world fighters against fascists, but uh, most unfairly, uh, we can see how these survivors are suffering hardships of every kind. It presents a clear message on why the audience had to support the Spanish Republicans in, in exile, because they were the big losers, in spite of their great sacrifices, fighting first against Franco and, and immediately after against the Nazi regime at the end of the Second War, uh, World War II, the Second War. They were the most neglected of all the refugee groups in the world at that time. The film shows some uh, overwhelming sense, uh, scenes on the medical care offered in France by the international relief organizations to the Spanish survivors and was addressed to the Canadian and mainly the American audience as the producers of the film were the two NGOs, the Unitarian Service Committee with headquarters in Boston, but also operated in France and in other countries, and the Joint Anti-Fascist Refugee Committee, chaired by Dr. Ed Edward Barsky, who was a sergeant in New York and a former medical chief of the Lincoln Brigade during the Spanish Civil War. I would like to highlight that uh, Barsky and also his executive board were the first victims of the American witch hunt by the House of Anti-American Activities Committee, as they refused to disclose the list of donors and the names of the Spanish anti-fascist refugees uh, to which they have provided support. 
The film uh, is in the framework of a propaganda campaign by the president of the Spanish Republican regime in exile, which is depicted here as well, Jose Girar, uh, with the, the aim to obtain, uh, to raise funds and, for, for, in, and also to obtain uh, support against uh, Franco. And Guillermo Lopez, that was his original name, had worked as a filmmaker um, for the Spanish Communist, uh, Communist Party's news rail and, and other um, news reels for local uh, uh, authorities. And as the war ended, he was sent to several uh, French concentration camps and cooperated with the French resistance, with, uh, but he managed to escape just before being deported to Germany. He settled down for a few years in, in France and then he fled to Argentina and went into hiding under the name of Guillermo uh, Zuniga. Just to, to uh, end with this, the film is presented by uh, Quentin Reynolds. He was an American journalist and a writer, a declared enemy of the Nazi regime. He was uh, a very well-known face for the audience of this film as he had starred many newsreels as a war correspondent uh, of the Second uh, Civil War. More or less in the middle of this documentary, there are some sequences, only a couple of minutes, devoted to a small hospital in Toulouse, France, which was then called Varsovia Hospital because that was the name of the street where it was located. Of course, no relation to the capital of Poland. Originally, in the fall of 1944, it was a clinic for the Spanish guerrilla, guerrillas of the French resistance against the Nazi invaders. But with the end of the war, this center was transformed into a civil hospital open to the Spanish Republican refugees in Toulouse, thanks to a team of health workers, also refugees, led by a Catalan doctor, Josep Torrubia. The documentary shows the medical care that the hospital despite its painful conditions offered to the survivors returning from the Nazi, Nazi, Nazi concentration camps to the southwest of France. The humanitarian aid provided from, Ameri from the Amer North American to that precarious hospital included large stocks of penicillin, then a very expensive and scarce drug in France. So doctors working at that hosp Toulouse hospital systematically reported to their counterparts in the United States their clinical observations resulting from the administration of penicillin in patients who had infectious diseases, mainly venereal and tuberculosis. Finally, it should be noted that the head of the surgical department of this hospital was a woman Dr. Maria Gomez, who during the Spanish Civil War had worked in a military hospital in Barcelona. Nevertheless, during the screening of the, the documentary, when she is performing surgical operation, you may notice that her name is replaced by that of the director of the hospital, Dr. Torrubia, in order to make it more acceptable to the American public. Next, you have the opportunity to watch this documentary. Thanks, many thanks. Thank you.